To get her to the cabin. The cabin? We got enough trouble dodging cattle guards. We don't need no more. Can't leave a woman to die, O'Leary. Trouble or not. If we hadn't come along, she'd have died. Well, we come along. What does she mean to us, Jace? We never seen her before. She's a stranger. Told you I ain't a woman killer. But I say we can't take her. If we get slowed up now. You so worried about them guards? Ride on. I'll follow quick as I can. You better make sure she's still alive. She's alive. There was a stage wreck about five miles down the gulch. Friend. Never seen her before. I thought you and Fleet were getting cattle. We got them. Four cows and two calves. We left them at Snake Canyon so we can change the brands. Snake Canyon? Couldn't drive them no further. A couple of herd guards spotted us. And you took time to drag her? Makes sense. Tell Fleet that. Bruce ain't so bad. I think she's coming around. But maybe she's hurt inside. Oh, I don't think so. She, uh, 
Looks kind of like Hesse, don't she? Not to me. Well, I don't mean her skin, color of her hair, nothing like that, but the way her face is. Don't you see it? Kind of strong-like, but soft, too, and gentle. Hesse's face was like that. But she ain't Hesse. From what's left of her clothes, she's a high-flown lady. Probably kin to the same kind of men what killed Hesse. Maybe. Aren't we still good and leave her to die? But what happens if she lives? She'll be able to tell all about this place, what it looks like, maybe even where it's hid. Now, what are we going to do with her? We can't let her go. <sighs> maybe she won't want to go. You're a fool, Jace. A fool. Take care of you, understand? Jason will take good care of you. Jason. Jason will take Food's ready, Jase. What? Oh, they're right there. Hey, old Larry. Remember this? Give it to Hesse on our 10th wedding anniversary. Sent clear to New York for it. I remember. She was in the corral when I brung it home, working the stallion. Didn't even wait to change clothes, put it right on. <laughs> she sure was a pitcher, prancing around in boots and a velvet bonnet. I thought she was going to get rid of all them things. Ain't had time yet. Here's a present that Hesse gave to me first year we was married. It's a poem by that O'Reilly fella she liked so much. She copied it out of a book. Said it told how she felt better than she could. It says, The red rose whispers of passion. The white rose breathes of love. The red rose is a falcon. The white rose is a dove. Of course, I can't read it like she could. It sounded like music then. Looking back all the time is no good, Chase. It just makes things worse. Just looking back. Just trying to find something for her. She's gonna need clothes, you know. Hers is pretty tore up. Hey, anyhow, what's so good about looking ahead? Yeah. Maybe it ain't so good, Chase. But it's alive. That ain't, not no more, not for over three years. <sighs> A 
fleet is mooning over that trunk again. Him and Hester was mighty close. Too close, maybe. What do you mean? Take today. Them herd guards. Before he started mooning around, Jason never got spotted. The law didn't even know what he looked like. Now they got posters out in all of us. Well, there was always posters on you, Charlie. From here to Missouri. That high-tone woman's another thing. Her kin will have a reward on her for sure. The law will be looking for her as well as us. Now, that's my lookout. They find us yours ain't the only neck that gets stretched. They've been nosing this gulch ever since I started rustling. They ain't found nothing yet. High-toned woman's got a way of sharpening a man's eyesight. I'll judge that, too. Jason! Jason! Here! Jason! Here! Jason! I'm oh. here. Oh, you are real. Oh, I thought I was dreaming. Oh, I'm real, all right. You're safe, just like I said. Safe. Oh, it doesn't seem... Oh! Oh! Head hurt? Uh, now, you just lay still. Uh, oh, you got a pretty bad knock. Uh, you just drink this. I'll make you feel better. No, no. Come on, headache syrup. Oh. Uh. How long have I been lying here? Well, Leary and me found you this morning on the ground near the stage. You was thrown out when it crashed. Was there... Was there anybody else? I didn't see nobody. Oh. What is it? Well, ever since I woke up, before I called you, I've been trying to remember what happened before the accident. And I can't. All I remember is falling. Not where I came from or where I was going, but just falling. You mean you can't remember nothing? Nothing at all? Nothing. Not even my name. Your name's Hesper. Hesper Fleet. Hesper. You're my wife. These are her things, all right. I made this for her myself. Fred, I don't understand it. They found the driver's body. How could she just disappear? She could have walked away, gone for help, and gotten lost. That mountain country around Volcano can be pretty tricky if you're not familiar with it. Weren't there any tracks? It was a cloudburst. Right after the accident, everything could have been washed away. I'm sorry. I just can't believe that she's dead. Neither do I. We can reach Volcano in a couple of days. Let's go. You take care of things here until Nick gets back from El Paso. Wait a minute. You can't get through to Volcano. What do you mean? Nobody's going up there. The storm broke out a dam two miles south of town. You'd have to swim, and even then the army would stop you. What do you expect us to do, Fred? Just sit here and wait? Use your head, Jared. Now, look, I know how you feel, but nobody can do anything until that water goes down. <laughs> Good morning, Jason. Good morning. Ah, you're looking mighty fine. How's it feel being up? Wonderful. I'm as good as... Oh. Hey, easy. <laughs> well, almost as good as new. Maybe you better go back to bed for a while. Oh, no, please. I know it's only been a few days, but, but I feel as though I've been there forever. Please, I couldn't stand it another minute. <laughs> 
Yeah. They feel comfortable? Mm-hmm. Yeah, always favored boots over slippers. I wouldn't even have known they were mine. looking at a shadow. It'll come back to you in time. Everything. Is this mine, too? Carved it for you myself. Yeah. Smell it. Pine bristles. Go ahead. Use it. It shines so. He always said there was nothing like pine bristles for polishing a woman's hair. Did I? I wish I could remember. It's all so... so strange. Sure, it's strange. You had a bad shock. Now I'll tell you about everything. A little at a time until you remember all of it. And until you do remember, and I ain't a stranger no more, this room's yours, understand? Just yours. in that trigger. Just thinking. How about you? I'm thinking you're a fool trying to make her believe she's Hesse. She already does believe it. Maybe. But it ain't stopped her puzzling. Ain't gonna stop her from asking questions, neither. What are you gonna tell her when she asks us what we do for a living? The truth. Figure it'll save a lot of trouble in the long run. That way she'll understand why she can't ride out much or go to town. Won't have to watch her all the time, like she's a prisoner. Maybe she won't take to being a rustler's wife. Or if she's concerned, it ain't a question of taking. She already is. Supper. Maybe he's right. Maybe it will save trouble. As long as he don't start thinking she's Hesse. Still wondering, Hesse? I'm always wondering. Jason, maybe if I went back there uh, to the wreck and looked at it, I... would you take me there? Take you? Well, sure, a few weeks. No, 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 now, today. Long way, hard riding. Well, I don't care about that. Don't you understand I've got to stop wondering? I've just got to, otherwise we... Otherwise, we'll always be strangers. All right, I'll take you.
anything to you? No. Why was I on the stage, Coach Jason? Well, you was uh, coming back from Amador City. Amador City? Yeah, supposed to be a real good lawyer there. You went to see him about trying to get our ranch back. Hey, a few years back, you and me and O'Leary owned all this land. They had the biggest spread hereabouts. Well, the gold hunters come and took it away from us. I don't understand. Squatting all over the place, digging, killing the stock, fouling the water. But the law, surely the well, this law... This land is part of an old Spanish grant. The law wouldn't recognize our rights to it. So first, O'Leary and me fought back, gun to gun. But there was too many of them, and they burned us out. All except that old place we're living in now. You couldn't find that. And so we lost everything. And I can't even help share the memory. You're here. That helps. We might as well go. Nothing even looks permitted. Oh, Chase, wait, wait. Hmm. Jason, was this mine? Was I wearing it? Well, not as I knowed. Oh. But didn't you... I thought you said nobody else was on the stagecoach. There wasn't. At least not that we saw. Why? Them pictures look familiar to you? No, never seen them before. It's going to be all right, Jason. Yeah, them herd guards usually can't shoot straight enough to do no real damage. Herd guards? Or deputies. Can't tell from here. Could be either one. No. But what do they want? Why are they shooting? Burning us out didn't change nothing, Hesse. O'Leary and me figure this land is still ours. And everything on it, including the cattle. So, we've been taking them back a few at a time. Well, we change the brands and sell them out of steak, that's all. But that's rustling. Can't steal what's already yours, Hesse. Well, I knew it'd come as a shock. You never did like it much. Can't hold them off much longer. And I have to make a run for the horses. But you can't, not with your legs. There's no other way. Now, whatever happens, you stay here undercover. No, I'm going with you. You'll need help. I don't want you risking yourself, Hesse. It's me they're after. Being a man's wife ain't no crime. Do you think you can mount? Sure. All right. Don't you start till I draw their fire. Hesse!
I thought you were resting. No need. Ever since you put that salve on, leg's feeling much better. Um, I'm sorry I had to go against the law to save me, Hesse. I know you didn't like it much. I couldn't let them kill you, Jason. Oh, I made you a little present. Kind of cheer you up a little bit. Carved it to match the brush. Oh, that's the loveliest comb I've ever seen. Thank you. I know it's hard to see the truth from just being told the past, Hesse. Now, believing in somebody's like, uh, well, it's like carving. Comes a little at a time. I'm just asking you not to judge me too harsh while you're deciding, that's all. Is cattle rustling the only way? Isn't there some other... No, not for now, Hissy. Believe me that much. Looks like they've been riding pretty hard. You mind fixing some coffee? I expected you back a couple of hours ago. What happened? We was lucky to get back at all. Them cattle guards set the sheriff from Volcano on your trail. Him and the deputies are crawling all over the gulch. If they find this place, we'll have her to thank. How do you figure that? It was on account of her that you went back to that wreck. Charlie's right. She's nothing but trouble, Jace. We got to get rid of her. Get rid of her? What do you mean? But we don't have to hurt her none. Just blindfold her. Then set the horse loose someplace where they'll be sure to find her. We turn her loose, she's liable to bring him back here. Better they find her body like they should have in the first place. You touch her, I'll drill you right between the eyes. Well, it's plain somebody's got to die. I don't care who Hesse was or what they called her. She's one of us now. She proved it by saving my life. And she's gonna stay one of us. Cold water. I thought you might like some. Thanks. Sewer dripping? Uh, it keeps the leather from cracking. Well, you'll be needing more. I'll start saving it for you. Now don't trouble. I run out, I'll get my own. Have you always disliked me so much? What? Well, Jason says we've been friends for years, but that's not true, is it? Sure she is. No, you're Jason's friend, not mine. Why? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you always seem to avoid me whenever I'm around. You never speak directly to me, not really. Not even to say, pass the coffee. Well, uh, I don't mean no harm. I just ain't talking, that's all. Was I different before the accident? Is that it? Different? What do you mean? Oh, I, I suppose I look the same, but people are... People are feelings and memories. How did I feel about things? Was I happy? Was I sad? Well, ask Jace. He recollects better than me. No, better, perhaps, but that's not the same thing. Don't you see, O'Leary? I've got to remember. Otherwise, I... Otherwise, I... I'll never find myself again. Well, um... He was gay, mostly. The laughingest woman I ever seen. Ray in a shine, you always saw things bright. Boy made a chuckle out of him. Well, then, we must have had some good times together. Oh, we had some fine times. 
especially before we lost the ranch. Ah, some real fine times. You know, you was not only the best cook around, but you could shoot and sit a horse better than any man, including Jace and me. <laughs> you know, once, once you even beat us in a greased pig contest. Now, Jace and me, we couldn't catch a pig, let alone hold on to it. And you didn't do no catching, oh, no. <laughs> you just plopped yourself on the ground see, and stuck a carrot in your ear. <laughs> and when that old pig come up to sniff it, you grabbed him. <laughs> I tell you. I tell you, Hesse was a woman, all right. And she died. Oh, I... I don't mean anything by that. It's, it's just, uh... Well, the, the accident did change you some. I promise you one thing, old Eric. If I never remember anything, I'll try to be healthy again. In every way. Gang, all right. Spread out. Hesse, Hesse, bring on. Fleet this time. Was that the woman you saw him with? Yeah. You recognize her, Sheriff? No. But I will if I see her again. Come on. Let's get out of here. I'm as hungry as a she-wolf with six pups. I didn't expect to spend the night under a tree. Now, we ain't heading back till I'm sure we wasn't followed. So quit belly aching. Keep your eyes open. I'll take over at midnight. I'll be finished with this in a minute. Darn a shirt and brand a steer in the same day. I'd say I'm a pretty lucky man. Jason, I've been thinking about that brand on the cattle today. It, uh, it seems so familiar. Well, that's no surprise. We get cattle from all over. 
Might have been quite a few carrying that brand. But I've been remembering other things, too. Um, a, a, a big house with white pillars. Now, do we know anybody who lives in a place like that? Nobody. You're just imagining things, Hesse. Well, I guess I am. But it... It seems so real. It seems... Oh. Headache again? Oh, it's, uh... It's been coming and going most of the afternoon. Yeah. It's all right now. No wonder you got a headache. You're working yourself to death. Now, oh. come on, come on. You've got to get some rest. Good night, Jason. Now we'll uh, we'll backtrack to the bottom of the gulch. Make sure our trail's covered before we head for the cabin. Right. It ain't likely anybody will pass this way. Well, I'll feel a lot easier if you have this. I feel so much better. I wish you'd let me go with you. Oh, it's going to be hard riding. You're better off here, resting. We'll be back in a couple of hours. you'd have the nerve to come waltzing into town in broad daylight. I don't know what you're talking about. I just came to town to send a telegram. You just come along with me. You're going to answer a few questions. What questions? About your friend, Jason Fleet. Jason Fleet? I don't know anybody by that name. You've made a mistake. You made the mistake thinking you wouldn't be recognized. You're under arrest for cattle wrestling. I... She's been caught. She didn't even have a chance to use the rifle. Ain't no sign of struggle. Well, they probably sneaked up on her just like they did us yesterday. 
Then how do you account for just one set of traps leaving here? I'm telling you, Hesse wouldn't leave like that. The law's got her, and I'm telling you something she else for the last Hesse, time. Jase. Hesse was beat to death because she wouldn't say where you was hiding. Now, calling another woman her name ain't going to change that. You got to face it. You got to, Jase. Where you going? I'm going after her. Well, them traps will take you right to Volcano Road. You want to meet up with the sheriff? Yep, he's got Hesse. I rode with you a long time, Jase. As long as it made sense everywhere. But this don't make sense. Now you do what you want to. We're going back to the cabin. It's your choice. I lost Hesse once. I ain't gonna lose her again. Sheriff, I don't know how many times I have to tell you I am Victoria Barkley. I was in the stagecoach well, Of record. course, of course. And where have you been since the last three weeks? All I remember is the stage starting to fall. Nothing until I found myself in the Mesquite Grove today with a locket my son Jared gave me for Christmas. Now, Sheriff, you have got to believe me. I'd like to. But I'd deserve to be locked up right alongside of you if I went for that story. It's no story. I saw you, Brandon, stolen cattle with Fleet yesterday as clear as I see you now. I've got two witnesses to back me up. But if I did do that, why would I ride into town today? We've been making things pretty hot for Fleet lately. I figure he's hard up for supplies. He sent you after him because he figured a woman would draw less attention. Sheriff, I've never been in Volcano before in my whole life. Look here. I don't know what Fleet means to you, but he's cost the ranchers around here a lot of money. They're mad enough to break in here and string you up, woman or not. So for your own sake, you better tell me where that hideout is. I wish I could, Sheriff. I wish I could. Because I have a feeling. I have a feeling that something very important happened to me during those weeks. Who do you want? I figured the sheriff had you. Come on out as quick as you can. I got horses in the alley. What is it, ma'am? I don't know. But I think I'm beginning to remember things. The hideout? Maybe. Where? I, I think I can take you there. We'll ride out at daylight. I think it's around there. You sure? Yes. I remember that gully. 
How much further? I don't know. All I remember is the house. Let's go. They told you she'd bring the law on us. She can't help it. They forced her. Mm. I tell you, she was jailed. I talked to her myself. Well, she ain't jailed now. She ain't even handcuffed. Well, they still got quite a ways to come. Maybe they'll turn back. I didn't want it to happen this way. But I, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember until I saw you. You did right. It had to happen this way. Could have done nothing else. I'm glad you was hissy. It was just for a little. So am I, Jason. light on, so I came to say goodnight. It's wonderful to have you home. It's wonderful to be home. What a lovely brush. Is that hand carved? Mm-hmm. Pine bristles. And they say there's nothing like them to make your hair shine. What are you thinking? Mm, you know, it's difficult to believe there's a stranger inside you. That under other circumstances you might have lived different kind of life. I think there's a stranger inside of everyone. But I wouldn't worry too much about it. I, I hear there's at least one horse thief in the best of families. <laughs> Something. I just decided that there's no bigger waste of man hours than chasing down a spooked herd. You know what I think? I'll tell you what I think. I think them stinking Murphy boys are the one that scattered them. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because they happen to know we're in the middle of a roundup and they're just mean enough to spook them out on us. That's what you think, huh? That is what I think. I also think I ought to go over there and bash a couple of Murphy heads together. Well, you're getting so heated up, I think you ought to do that. 
I just might do that. You want to come along? No, thanks. Well, I'll go alone, then. You know, Nick, sometimes you get so brave, you scare me. Yeah, well... Well, now, what are you staring at? I wonder what those buzzards are staring at. Well, that's one way to find out, isn't I it? I know. Let's go look. All right. Come on. Get Sorry, Nick. I know that's painful. Here now. Drink this. Now, lie back. Don't twist around. Just to leave those scratches uncovered. You've been talking about having a vacation. Here you are. You can sleep all day and, and have your meal served to you in bed. I'll, 
I'll get you a bell and you can ring it when you're hungry. What? I've been trying to tell you how lucky you are. Nick? Well, he's got three broken ribs and some nasty lacerations on his legs and chest. That cat did quite a job on him. Quite a job. Knowing Nick, however, he'll probably decide the whole thing was nothing at all and be trying to kick up his heels in a day or two. But don't let him. Keep him in bed for three days at least. Then slowly let him get up and move around. He'll be all right if you don't let him push it. Doctor, he seems so strange. Yes, what is it? He... He looks at you, but it's as if he isn't seeing you. Well, that's only natural. He's still in a state of shock. He'll pull out of it, all right. I'll uh, look in on him tomorrow. Maybe uh, around lunchtime, if you still have some of that pickled goose at the cooler. You've just gotten yourself an invitation. Good. In the meantime, Victoria, get yourself some sleep. Good night. Thank you. Ah, don't you worry. Doc's right. If I know Nick, he'll be up and around in no time. Well, I'll never complain about his hollering around the house again. Now, be careful. In a day or two, you might have to eat those words. <laughs> Come on, let's get some sleep. been dreaming. Well, you raised me about a foot off the floor. Sorry. I... Sorry. Can I get you anything? No, no, no. You, you go back to bed. I'll be, I'll be fine. So... Come on, back to bed. It's okay. You rest easy. Yeah. He's practically ready for a foot race. A short walk to the breakfast table will do for today. <laughs> he might be a little stiff on the uh, outside, but his belly must be working all right. Empty sack won't stand up, you know. Spoken like a true Barkley. Take more than a little old pussycat to keep Nick down, huh? Personally, I think he's too tough and stringy. Cat's probably got indigestion. Well, if that cat does have indigestion, I think the best thing we can do is put him out of his misery. Tanner should be here today. Who's Tanner? Professional hunter. I wired him yesterday. Why? I can't hit another steer yesterday, Nick. Well, that's no reason to call in a professional hunter. Well, we're shorthanded on the roundup now. We can't spare anyone. I'm not getting that cat myself. Oh, Nick, you can't be serious. Nick, you get up on a horse and you'll shove those busted ribs right through your lungs. It's not likely. Besides, I'm only bossing that roundup so as you can rest. That's fine. You can boss the roundup. I'm going to get that cat. Sorry, Nick. You can't have him.
Tanner. Uh, my name is Jared Barkley. They told me at your hotel I'd find you here. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a little talk. Shh. Mr. Barkley, I paid very good money for this private performance. So why don't you uh, drink your wine and enjoy it? Hmm? Uh, thank you very much. But if you don't mind, I would like to get right down to business. I never mix business with pleasure, Mr. Barkley. And this is my pleasure. last another two hours well if you don't mind i have some other things i'd like to take care of so maybe you could meet me in my office after this is over with uh, relax mr barkley culture is good for the soul go just try a little of this rice wine i'll explain to you what's going on and that girl has just found the beautiful jade bracelet and is caught in the dilemma of whether to find the owner or keep it. What she does not know is, a bracelet was left outside her door by a handsome young suitor. She couldn't accept an outright gift from him, so he has chosen this uh, subterfuge to get it into her hands. She cannot resist it. And the young man, of course, can now announce that uh, it is his gift. You see the subtlety of the Oriental mind, Mr. Barclay. Oh, yes, perfectly. Good. Jared tells me you're quite a fan of the Chinese theater. Well, I enjoy in life uh, what I can afford. Good wine, good art, good people. You hardly seem like a professional hunter. Well, hunting is my business. Living is my pleasure. Well, you come highly recommended. And you are even more gracious and lovely than I've been told. Oh, Mr. Dana, you are a charming liar. <laughs> I would be if I had to, Mrs. Barkley. But in this case, lying is totally unnecessary. Now, uh, Mr. Tanner. Just when is it you plan to get started? Uh, before dawn. Good. If you'll excuse me, I'm off to Sacramento in the morning, so I have to turn in early. Good night, Mother. See you at breakfast, Nick. And I think it's about time for you to turn in, Nick. I want to say something first. Oh? I'm going with Tanner tomorrow morning. Nick! Mr. Barclay, I think you'd better understand something. You can't come with me. I work alone. I think you'd better understand something, Tanner. I was against hiring you in the first place. Now, there's nothing personal in that. Even if I allowed you to come along, Mr. Barclay, you're in no shape for it. I'm the best judge of that, don't you think? Well, there's no point in pursuing this any farther. You hired me to hunt down the cat. That's what I'm going to do. Alone. Good night. Nick, I thought we settled all this at breakfast. You were going to stay here and rest. Mother, now, Mother, this Mother, I'm a fast mender. Probably a medical marvel. Nick, Now, what do I... I have to do to convince you? Would you like me to run around a house a couple of times holding my breath? Or maybe you'd like to see me jump the corral fence? Oh, come on, Mother, stop frowning. Look at this smiling face. I'm a picture of hell. Nick, I won't buy it, Nick. Mother, that cat hit at me, and I'm going to hit back. Revenge. Oh, for heaven's sake, Nick, that cat is a dumb animal. You're a man with intelligence and reason. You don't need revenge. It's getting late, and I gotta get up pretty early in the morning. I best get some sleep. Good night. Nick. There's more to it, isn't there? It's just something I have to do. So.
What do you think you're doing? I told you last night I'm going with you. I said you weren't. Well, here I am, right beside you. Barkley, that is not an ordinary cat. A man wounded him once or he wouldn't have attacked. And he'll attack again at the first smell of you. Take my chances. Oh, well and good. But there's the matter of me also. I've done this all my life. I know more than most, and that edge keeps me alive. Well, I'm not about to take away that edge, Tanner. But trying or not, you will. You're a cripple and an amateur. I won't risk taking you along. Well, then you best go back to the ranch and pick up your fee, because I'll go it alone anyway. All right, Barkley. You want to track Cat? Come on. too tired to realize you've been traveling in circles for the past hour. Well, it's only a little over three miles back to the ranch. You could make it before noon. If I was to turn back, but I'm not about to. Why? You quit stalling, Tanner. Let's get on with this. Coming along with me, it doesn't mean I have to explain my moves to you. Uh huh. Well, the way I got it figured is since that cat's been fired at the last three times he's been near the herd, he's probably going up high, let things cool off a bit. Well, that's pretty fair figuring, Mr. Barkley. Glad to see you're aware of what's happening. Well, I was just checking to see that your thinking was correct, Mr. Tanner. <laughs> well, since you're so knowledgeable on the subject, maybe you could tell me what my next move should be. Well, I'd say since we think that the uh, cat is in this area, it might be wise to stake out some fresh meat. Not bad. As soon as I decide the right place to do that, I'll just give it a try. Mozart, Mr. Barkley? Well, it's just bad coffee, and I don't like waiting. First rule of the hunter, Mr. Barkley, learn how to wait it out. We staked fresh meat out for that cat two days ago, and he ain't showed up. I don't think he's anywhere in this area. Well, I hope that cat isn't as impatient to get to you, Mr. Barkley, as you are to get to him.
What the devil do you think you're doing? The cat. Right up in the rocks, the cat! That cat won't come near this fire, and you know it. But I tell you, I saw him! Barkley, the only cat around here is the one in your head. Still say I didn't see that cat in the camp last night? Well, since he supposedly was standing on the rocks where he couldn't leave tracks, you'll never know, will you? You mean, you'll never know. He came down to feed from up there. Caving in. Now, why don't you sit down before you fall down? His legs hurt. How bad? Well, he won't be carrying you for a while. That meadow we came through a ways back, uh, I saw a cabin. I'll take you there. trick on my brave young friend here. His uh, horse took a fall and went lame. He's got a couple of busted ribs. That's so. Yeah, a roof and bed would, uh, would be most appreciated. He, he does look in a bad way. I only need a couple hours of rest, man. This is my wife, Ed. Howdy. A tanner is my name. Uh, this is Nick Barkley. Maybe we should ask him in, Tom. See what you can do for him. Uh, well, uh, once in a while. Low stakes, of course. Yeah.
Twenty dollars. Well, now, I, uh... I... I think I'll call. Straight. Yes, let's see. Now, you have a... You have a straight, and I have... all hearts. Oh, let me think. Um... That's right. Um... A flush beats a straight, doesn't it? I gotta get some money out back. Here. Ah. Try a little of this, Mr. Barclay. What, 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 is, what is it? It's a special broth I fixed for oh. you. No, I, it's very good, thank you. Why, well, you're a generous and sweet angel of mercy, Mrs. Giles. I'm not really Mrs. Giles. You're not? No. Mr. Giles won me from a saloon keeper in, in a poker game. I just thought you might be interested in knowing that. Now, drink your soup. Ready? Let's say we uh, raise the ante, Mr. Tanner. You mean uh, play for more money? It's a general idea. Well, if you really want to, Mr. Giles. How did everything go in Sacramento? Once again, I must modestly admit that my brilliance as a barrister saved the Barclay family from total destruction. Total destruction? Well, maybe just a minor annoyance. He's still on Roundup? Mm-hmm. How's Nick? He's gone. What do you mean, gone? Gone where? After the cat. He went after that cat? Mm-hmm. Shortly after you left with Sacramento. Well, why didn't you try and stop him? I didn't see him go. Well, then how do you know he went after the cat? Because I know. Well, at least you could have done it, sent somebody after him. It wouldn't have done any good, I'm sure. He's with Tanner. The devil has gotten into him anyway. What suddenly is so almighty important about hunting down a cat? What was so important when you went out to ride lightning during the middle of winter last year? Well, what's that got to do with this? He doesn't see the comparison. Well, that's odd. I see it very clearly. You wanted to break the horse. Instead, the horse broke your leg. Well, then. So at midnight, with your leg in splints, you sneak out of the house and climb on the poor animal's back. Maybe I was just trying to prove that I... And maybe I see the comparison after all. We'll just have to wait until he gets back. We'll just have to wait.
keep staring at me. Sorry. I keep getting the feeling that maybe we've met before. We haven't. I don't usually forget a face. You never forgot mine. Because you never saw it before. This is my hand, Tanner. This time, I got you beat. Well, now, Mr. Giles, I've got your money, your horse, your saddle, your cabin. I'll bet you 200. But you haven't got 200. I'm good for it. Sorry, Mr. Giles, I never play on credit. However, it wouldn't seem fair not to give you a chance to recoup. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call your 200 against your wife. If the lady is agreeable, If you're sure you've got him beat. All right. All right. Three aces. I have three queens. And two nines. Oh, you. You stink. You cheated me. Mr. Giles, what makes you say that? You made me think you didn't know much about poker. No, Mr. Giles, I never said I didn't know poker. I just didn't say how much. Even though you are a very poor loser, I'm going to be very kind to you. I'm going to let you go over there and get that horse. Just the horse. Because I'm going to keep the saddle. And I'm going to let you ride out of here, all right? All right. All right. What's happening? Well, there he is. Oh, bright-eyed like a hungry fox. Did you sleep well, Mr. Barkley? What's going on? What was all that fighting about? The evils of gambling. He was a very poor loser. Oh, well, we'd best get moving. Right you are. But you have got to do one thing first. What's that? You have got to put your boots on. Oh, uh, well... You kind of like him, don't you? Yes. Good. Then uh, keep him here. You're leaving him with me? Mm hmm. If he keeps chasing that cat in his condition, he'll kill himself. Aren't you going to say goodbye to him? No, it's best I don't. He can be a little stubborn sometimes. I'll uh, stop on my way back down the hill. You hear three shots, put the skillet on, because I'm going to be hungry. Oh, uh. 
Have fun. Mr. Tanner said for me to take care of you. You tell Mr. Tanner that you tried. Well, I catch up with him. Ah. Nick. Well, just what do you plan to do with that? Mr. Tanner said for me to keep you here. Berry pie wouldn't work, so you figure the gun will, huh? It's for your own good. And you're the judge of what's best for me. What? But you're not thinking clear, huh? On account of your sick. Beth, if you're going to use that gun, you best go ahead and do it. Because I'm walking out of here. I guess my pa was right. What about? He always said that I was uglier than a mud fence. Well, I'd say your father was either half blind or, or crazy. I don't hardly remember. Ran off when I was 11. And I, I seen a lot of ugly things since. Beth, I don't know what you've seen, but you've gotten a lot prettier than the mud fence. Then why you want to leave? Well, I just have to finish what I started. on your way back? Giles, where did you find that rifle? There's more than one cabin in these hills. They just know the territory. I suppose you want your money back. Mostly. I want your hide. You, you know that feeling I had about knowing you before? Now I know where I saw your face. They say a man's memory improves sometimes. Just before he dies. Stanton. 
Ted Stanton, and your face was on a wanted poster in Stockton. You'll recall, I used this on more than one man. You know, the law has thought you dead for a long time. I was living a quiet life. You took my comforts, shamed me in front of my woman. I hope you're ready for your comforts. Put that rifle down. Put down that rifle. standing there. Long enough for him to put a slug in you. Well, why did you stop him? That's a very interesting question. It'll take a few seconds to think of a very interesting answer. Asking for trouble, you know that, don't you? You don't hunt a cat with a spooky horse. Nothing wrong with this horse. Oh, sure. Saddle on its back for a couple of weeks, it'll be fine, but right now you two are strangers. We'll get acquainted. There's no time. That cat's pretty close. Now, if you can't control that animal, we could get in trouble. That's my worry. Let's move out. You know, Barkley, you're not a coward. <laughs> I guess you're right about this horse. I'll uh, tie him off down below.
Now that you've satisfied your soul, you up to filling your belly? I promised that angel of mercy I'd fire three shots so she could put the skillet on for us. Jam. It's jam. How long has it been jammed? I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, I suppose it was meant to be, Nick. What's that? It was your cat. Yeah. It was my cat. Perteneciendo en el jardín que no pertenece. Sí, pero bellezas como esta pertenecen a todos. What do you want? What do you have, señor? Ándale, Juan. Súbete. Vámonos. Vámonos. What is this? My brothers, we were in mortal danger and we didn't even know it. Madre mía. And what we have here? Pretty. Amigo, vámonos. Andele, andele. And what do you have to give, lovely senorita? Mi hermano. To look upon her as a gift itself. You are music for my lonely soul, senorita. I don't hear any music. That is easily remedied, senorita. Juan, the guitar. Sí, hombre, cómo no. Senorita. Come. bird is frightened. I will not hurt you. Relax. You want, let us go. That may take some time, senor. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, sir. Like a room with a bath, please. Yes, sir. Got one just newly painted. Cost you uh, $3, though. Well, I guess a man ought to treat himself to the very best every now and then. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, have the Mendoza brothers checked in yet? The Mendoza brothers? Uh-huh. They're supposed to meet me here. No, sir. Nobody by that name is registered at this hotel. You are sure? Positive. Well, they'll be checking in a little later. When they do, let me know right away, will you please? Yes, sir. Are you dining alone, sir? Unfortunately. And that's one of my tables. Looks just lovely. You better be careful, young lady. You're going to spoil me. I bet you're used to that. Now, let's see. What's exciting? Well, the pie roast is good, and there's a dance later. <laughs> well, now, maybe I better try both, in that order. My name's Sally. Hello, Sally. Sue? Guess I have to start somewhere. Jared? Well, George Akers. I thought that was you. How are you? It's Fine. nice to see you. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, have you had dinner? I just finished, thanks. Oh. Well, how have you been? Splendid. You? Oh, can't complain, I guess. How's the law business here in Baker City? Oh, last week I defended a drunk who kicked a pig. <laughs> How'd you do? I got him a light fine. Told the judge my client thought the pig was a mad dog. <laughs> When'd you arrive? Oh, a couple of hours ago. To see the Mendoza brothers. Well, yes, as a matter of fact. Do you know them? Oh, I just met them very briefly. They said they were here to meet you. What do you mean, we're here? They left. They left? Uh-huh. Well, I don't understand. They were coming here to buy some vineyard land from me north of town. Where the devil did they go? They probably went back to Mexico. They came in a couple of days ago. Looked at the land, decided they didn't want it. Asked me to tell you about it. Well, I'll be... That doesn't make any sense. They sent me a $300 deposit. What'd they say about that? They understood it would be forfeited. Huh. That's a lot of money. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Jared. After all, you did everything you could to hold up your side of the bargain. Well, I suppose you're right about that. Oh, by the way, how's your lovely wife, uh... Felicia? Fine. She's visiting her mother in Kiowa for a couple of days. Oh, we'll be sure and give her my regards. I'll do that. Well, it's good to see you, Jared. It's good to see you. If you get caught kicking any pigs before you leave town, give me a call. <laughs> Well, Sally, thanks to you, I guess my trip won't be a total waste. What time do we trip the Life Fantastic? Huh? The dance we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, I'll bet you're real good on the dance floor, too. But I think I'm going to have to beg off. Oh? Well, to tell you the truth, it, it's been a long, hard day, and I'm kind of tired. That happened kind of suddenly, didn't it? Well, I, I've been on my feet since 6 o'clock this morning. I, I, I guess it just came over me all of a sudden. I'll get the rest of your supper. Good evening. You mind if I walk you home? I'd like to talk to you. About what? Well, for one thing, the Mendoza brothers. Who are the Mendoza brothers? Oh, you don't know them? Why would I? No reason, I guess. Tell me something. Why would you change your mind so suddenly about that dance? I told you I was tired. Seems to me you didn't get tired until George Akers came over to the table. What did he have to do with it? Well, I don't exactly know. It's just that I've been getting kind of strange reactions from people around here every time I mention the Mendoza brothers. I don't know what you mean. I don't exactly know either. I was hoping maybe you could help. You're a nice man, Mr. Barclay. I appreciate you walking me home. But I make it a point to keep out of other people's affairs. You ask too many questions, you usually get hurt. Sally, now that's usually a pretty good rule, but I... I follow it. Goodbye, Mr. Barclay. Oh, hello, 
heard you were in town. I was wondering if you were going to drop by. Well, I guess I would have gotten around to it sooner or later. Uh, how's your mom? Oh, fine, fine. Everybody's fine. Good, good. You know, uh, George Akers was saying that you were asking about those three brothers. Did you see him, Tom? Well, he rode in briefly, rode right out again. Just can't understand why they wouldn't at least send a telegraph. Let me know. Well, you know how the Mexicans are. No, how are they? Oh, well, what I mean is, uh, well, they probably got homesick. Decided to forget the whole thing. I wouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. Nice talking to you, Tom. You too, you too. Uh, Jared? I suppose you'll be leaving in the morning, huh? Well, I wouldn't bother you if I just hung around for a couple of days, would it, Tom? Well, why should it bother me? That's right. Why should it? Mr. Barclay. Yes, what is it? Dirk Sampson. How do you do? Just fine. Hey, wait a minute now. You better relax, Mr. Barkley, or you're going to end up with a hole in your head. That's a little better. And now that we have got your attention... What's this little meeting all about? Now, that's Sally. You see, Sally's my girl. And I don't appreciate the fact of uh, you walking her home the way you did. Now, if she's your girl, she sure keeps it a secret. You hurt my feelings with that kind of talk, Mr. Barclay. I'll, I'll tell you what I think the best thing is all around. Go home, Mr. Barclay. Go home first thing in the morning. And I'm sure with you either way, why me and Sally, well, we would get along just fine. What do you think about that, Mr. Barclay? I guess uh, he agrees, fellas, because he sure ain't arguing. Let him go. Remember, Barkley, you're leaving. First thing in the morning. ran into an acquaintance of yours. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your boyfriend who seems to think I'm pushing in on his territory. I haven't got any boyfriend. Are you sure of that? I'm positive. Well, I I've only been here for a month. That's what I thought. Whoever it was must have been drunk or something. Oh, no. Nobody was drunk. They were just using you to give me a little message. You must be imagining things. Now, listen, Sally, I'm not imagining my ribs being kicked in. This town wants me out. Why? Listen, somebody beats you up. That's your business. The magic word anything. is Mendoza, the three brothers who just rode in and rode out. You heard it. Where are they? I don't know. You're lying. No, no. Listen to me, please. You've been warned. I'll leave it alone. If you don't, your life will do wind up dead. And that's the only thing that's going to stop me from asking questions. Well, then ask somebody else. I'm asking you. No. Get out of here! Well, I'm mad enough, and I heard enough to keep you up all night if I have to. No, I want answers! Don't run to death! What are you talking about? They were lynched. They killed a woman. They raped her, and they killed her. Was there a trial? No. Where was the sheriff? He was there, watching with the rest of us.
Didn't work, Tom. What are you talking about, Jared? I'm talking about the three you sent to rough me up. It only made me more curious. And now I've got the answer. Well, two days ago, George and Alicia were in their buggy about 10 miles out of town. Three of them pulled the buggy off the road and they started. They made her dance with them. Then when they started putting their hands on her, I went crazy. They knocked me out. And when I came to, Alicia was gone. So was the buggy. There were bloodstains on the ground. And I put a posse together and went out right away. But I couldn't find anything. Then the next day, the three of them rode into town. They checked into the hotel to wait for you. I guess they never figured the one man who could identify them lived here. Then everybody went sort of crazy. They, they grabbed a rope and, well, short of shooting every man in town, I, I, I couldn't stop it, Jared. I'd like to read you, too, a letter that was written by one of the men you hanged. says, Senor Barkley, we have heard of you and your family for many years in Mexico. The Barkley name is honored and respected, so we are very proud that you have agreed to sell us your land in the beautiful California. We've worked many years to save the money needed. We want to become citizens of your country, to earn the love and respect of your people. Now I ask you, does this letter sound like it could be written by a man who would do this? They did it. They held me and made me watch. I pleaded with them. I told them to kill me, but please don't hurt her. But they just laughed at me and said one filthy thing after another. Don't blame Tom. If I had it to do over again, I'd have led the lynching myself. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll say good night. Jared, you live by the law all your life. And so have I. I'm sorry this had to happen in my town. I really am. But I'm not going to blame myself too much for it. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. You say it happened about 10 miles out of town? About that. I just can't understand why those three would ride in here when they knew Akers could identify them. Now, what are you getting at? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just can't understand why they'd kill her and not him. Doesn't add up. No, a killer never does. Especially by those kind. What kind is that, Tom? Well, those Mexicans, of course. Of course. What do you want? Is Mr. Akers in? He's gone. Had to see a client. The man who kicked a pig? What? Never mind, I'll wait. He may be some time, Mr. Barclay. You know me? Everybody knows you. So it would seem. Mr. Barclay, they killed Mrs. Akers in cold blood and for no reason except to satisfy their lust. They deserved to be hanged. They deserved a fair trial. You sure? 
surely don't believe those three were innocent. Mr. Akers recognized them plain as day. Yes, yes, so he says. It's just that there are a couple of little things I don't quite understand. Mr. Barkley, why don't you go away? Why don't you leave Mr. Akers alone? Hasn't he gone through enough in the last seven years? The last seven years? I didn't mean that. I meant that... that the poor man has had a terrible tragedy and people shouldn't be poking their noses in at such a time. How long were the Akers married? Seems to me it was about seven years, wasn't it? How'd they get along all that time? I mean, was there any... any little trouble between them? I won't answer that. I think you already have. Maybe I had better come back at another time. As you say, it might be a long wait. What's wrong? Last night I was rereading this letter, Tom. Oh, now look, Jared. Now, what's the point in going over it again? You've never heard the second page. Meaning what? Does Akers speak Spanish? No. But he claimed all three Mexicans spoke to him, right? Yes. All right. Now, this letter was written by the oldest Mendoza brother. At the end of it, he apologizes for the fact that he was the only one who could speak or write English. Uh, one of them did all the talking. Other two just uh, jabbered away in Spanish. I just figured it was because they were, they were scared or, or excited. Or they couldn't speak English. Uh, look, Jack, now why would Akers, uh, why would Akers identify them if they weren't the three who did it? I don't know. Possible he made a mistake. It's also possible there never were any Mexicans. Are you suggesting that Akers killed Alicia himself? Kind of sounds that way, doesn't it? Oh, Jared, you're really on the wrong track. Oh, he was crazy about her. Why, well, he showed her off all the time. I just had a talk with his housekeeper. She gave me the definite impression that there was trouble between them. Oh, she's an old busybody. Why, she's been jealous of Alicia ever since the day Akers brought her home. You can't put any store in her. And as for Akers saying that all three of them spoke English, well, that's an understandable mistake. He was in a state of shock when it happened. All I'm asking you to do is consider the possibility. That I hung three innocent men? Not likely, Jared. Not likely at all. You afraid to dig a little deeper? Now, how would I do that? Let's find Alicia's body. I looked for it. Then let's look again. Now, what'll that prove? I don't know. But if she was assaulted before she was murdered, that'll show. And if she was just plain murdered, that'll show, too. You willing to face up to the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I know the truth. But if you need proof... I do, Tom. And down in your guts, you need it, too. <laughs> goes to Rock Creek. That's where Akers and his wife were supposed to be coming from. Uh-huh. You go up there with a the posse? I covered the whole area. Didn't find anything. You know, Tom, a fellow who might have murdered his wife isn't going to be likely to want the law to find her body, is he? Meaning he could have misdirected us. Meaning we better try this way. like Acres Buggy. Hello there. Where'd you get this buggy? Who's asking? Sheriff Hayes, Baker City. Sheriff, huh? Too bad you didn't come nosing around when the bargaining was going on. What bargaining? Three Mexicans two days ago. Said they wanted to trade that buggy. Three Mexicans? That's what I said. Just two days ago with this buggy. Which I didn't want. These Mexicans. what they look like? Like Mexicans. I mean, would you be able to recognize them if you saw them again? I'd sure recognize one of them. Sitting there on that Palomino with one of them fancy silver saddles. I won't forget that one. 
What kind of supplies were they after? Oh, trail supplies, food, blankets, stuff I couldn't spare. I take it then you weren't exactly in favor of the trade. That's exactly what I mean. But this grinning Mexican had a gun, so there wasn't nothing I could do. You here to get my stuff back? Now, which way did they go when they left? South. Thanks for your help. You can thank me by bringing my stuff back. I sure don't need that buggy. Jared. They were the ones. That sounds that way, doesn't it, Tom? And I hung three innocent men. Now, how do I fix it? How do I live with a thing like that? They can't be far. We just get them, that's all. But what's inside me? What I did? Catching them won't change that. No, it won't. But it's a start. How many? I don't know. I couldn't tell. I gotta get you to a doctor. No. No doctor can fix this. Oh, yet. sure they can. Oh, Jared. No. You just promise me you'll get it all straight. Ooh. You just rest easy, Tom. I'll get you some water. Someone right up. Nice to see you. He hungry? I could eat. Got beans or ham? Or both, if you got the courage. <laughs> A little joke. I ain't the best cook in the world, but I'm sociable. <laughs> I'll try the ham. Ham and spuds coming up. Get much traffic through here? I mean, other than the stage. Well, you might say I get about all of what comes through. You know, I'm the only stop between here and Baker City. What about three men? Mexicans. One of them riding a Palomino with a fancy saddle. What about them? They come through here. What happened there? Bullet. Mr. Crease. One of those Mexicans? I think so. Look, mister. Now, I make it a point never to get involved in anyone else's battles. I stay a lot healthier that way. They did come through here, then. You ain't hearing anything from me. 
Suit yourself. That's the way you feel. If you want to tend that arm, I got some astringent back here. It's all right. Taking care of itself. Hey, uh, you want to hear a funny story the stage driver told me this morning? Not particularly. Those three Mexicans. <sighs> what about them? It was yesterday they came through. Oh? Yeah. They were in a hurry. Bought some food, a couple bottles of whiskey. Hmm. I suppose they told you which way they were going. Well, they didn't actually make a point to tell me. Bet you heard, though, huh? As a matter of fact, I heard one of them say they were headed for the border. How much do I owe you? You didn't finish it. Oh, it's like you said. How's that? You're a lot better at talking than cooking. I said, on your feet. Senor, what is the meaning of this? You're coming with me back to Baker City. We're gonna have a little talk with the law. There must be some mistake. No mistake. We have done nothing except share the stars. It is true, senor. We're just plain vaqueros. Why would the law want us? A murder. We have murdered no one. No one except Sheriff Hayes and Alicia Akers. But you have come a long way for nothing. That's right, Mr. Barkley. Alicia? Yes? I thought you were dead. Who told you that? Your husband. He told the whole town that you'd been raped and murdered by these three. My husband lied. I left him. I went with Francisco willingly. And George watched me go. You went with them willingly? Three Mendoza brothers rode into Baker City to see me on business. Your husband told everybody they were the ones that stopped your buggy and murdered you. They lynched them. That makes no sense. He didn't want anybody to find you with them. He hanged three innocent men just to protect his reputation. 
You always did have excellent perception, Jared. The gun. Over here. All right, George. Just tell me one thing, will you? Why'd you have to murder Hayes? I was sorry I didn't get you too, Jared. Then when you headed south, I figured you had an idea where these four were, so I followed. Is a reputation really worth all this, George? You think you could stand being laughed at everywhere? That's all that's ever mattered to him, not looking the fool. Appearing to be an upright citizen, a perfect husband and a gentleman. Only I knew different. Because when he couldn't feel that he was a man outside the house, then he'd slap me around and that made him feel really important. You've no idea what it was like, living like that. You had everything a woman could want. I had nothing. Oh, I could tell you stories. Once he went into a rage like a little boy because the mayor didn't invite him to his birthday party. He nearly cried. Running true to form. You dare talk to me after what you've done? After what I've done? What I've tried to do is get away from you. I asked for a divorce once. That was impossible. Not proper. The right people would talk. They might even ask questions. He said that he'd kill me if I ever mentioned it again. You should have killed him, my love. Your love. You did what no man can do to me. You. Nothing. Thief. Animal. If I am those things, senor, then you must be worse, or she would not have left you. I would have shot you sooner. From out there. But that would have been too gracious. Now you can die slowly. And you can watch, just like you made me watch. Stay where you are! George! the facts. What does that mean? Means he's got the facts. Would you like me to ride out with you a little way? Francisco's waiting for me. Alicia, are you sure you know what you're doing? George made me feel cold and empty. Francisco doesn't. Simple as that, huh? Simple as that. Goodbye, Jerry. Mr. Barclay, well, what I did, what we all did, uh, the fact is we thought we were doing the right thing. Well, I've I only been here a month. You learn quick. What about us? You'll have to live with yourselves. <laughs> 